Hi all and welcome to another ProBuilder tutorial and this will be taking a look at just how to edit the UVs and texture within ProBuilder. So to get started let's just go ahead and go to Window 6x7 ProBuilder to bring up the window and click on Activate. Now let's say I wanted to give sort of a red carpet look to this or something where I'm going to paint just the tops of these stairs all red. Uh, and we'll do some other more exciting things afterward, but we'll start with that nice and simple. So to do this, simply select each of the objects that you're going to edit the textures and the UVs for, just like so, and then click on Edit Selected under Texturing. Now in the right hand side, or it might open up in a bit of a different area, but you'll have the UV Tools window pop up, and of course you can place that wherever you like. And then at the very top, you'll see where you can select a material. Simply do this by clicking on the dot icon, just like Unity's standard system. And I'm going to select this grid box red just for uh, demonstration right now. And with that selected, now all I have to do is right click on any surface, actually, even if it wasn't selected originally, any surface at all, and it will apply it instantly. So you can see applying this texture is very, very simple, just like so. Now, if I want to apply a certain material to all planes or all faces on an object, it's also very simple. Or let's just say all selected planes. I can select a group of planes, so let's do maybe all these side ones. And I'm just holding control to select multiple, just like you would in, in Unity normally. Now that I have some planes selected, you'll notice that a whole bunch of new options open up. These are mostly for the UV control, which we'll get into in a moment. Right now we just want to apply a texture to these all at once. So once again, click on the dot and choose, let's say we want these to be uh, the blue texture here. So again, with them selected, we have a material applied there. Click on Apply to Selection and it drops them right in. So now all of those that were selected have that material on it. One thing that you can do to make things a little easier sometimes if you want to apply material to every single face uh, on all the objects that you selected when entering texture mode, simply hit Control A and when you are in uh, texture mode you can only select the planes that were in the objects you selected originally. So when I hit Control A I don't select anything else in my level, it only selects all of the planes. And now I can simply choose say I want these to be, uh, let's go with the orange color and hit apply. So that's a quick trick uh, if you ever need to just quickly apply one material to a large selection of objects but only the objects you are editing currently. So let's reset that to the gray and then drop back on the red color. So there you have it. That's the basics of texturing. Let's look at some of the UV control options that we have. So to work with the UV control options, let's actually create a new box. Just so we can look at it exactly on a one meter by one meter scale. Now with this, just to edit the UVs, again we simply, of course, have it selected and then go to edit selected, still under the texturing area. And then we have still that UV Tools window. And just as before, when we select more, uh, one or more faces, we get all of the extra UV controlling options. So let's go ahead and drop on a material that allow us to really see how these, uh, these options change it. So I'm going to just grab the UV grid and apply that to all of them do that. Okay, there we go. So with this on, I can see exactly how the, uh, the UVs are showing up on this. Let's take a look at how those controls work. So with just this front face selected here, if I click on Flip View, you can tell it flips it horizontally. Flip V flips it vertically. Swap UV does sort of a rotation and a flip at the same time. Uh, can be handy in some special situations. When you need it, you will know that you, uh, you'll you know what it does, I guess, otherwise it can be a little strange. 
but it's there and useful. There's the fill option. Let's actually edit this just a little bit so we can see how fill works. So going back to this, now that we have a cube, or sorry, now that we have something that is not a cube, if we use the fill option, you'll see that that face just perfectly fills or, or becomes as the, the texture becomes as large as it can to fill up that face without stretching at all. So you don't get any stretch textures. It simply fills it up and stays normalized so you don't have any uh, stretching problems and such. You can do the same over here. And there it is. So fill can be useful in a lot of different situations, uh, mainly if you just want a texture that has to fit exactly to what you have. Of course, when you're editing the geometry afterward, it'll stay with it. You don't have to keep reapplying that fill to it. So underneath that, we also have the scale, offset, and rotation. So the scale is basically just tiling. On the X is the horizontal. On the Y is the vertical. And the offset is the same. Y moves it up and down, X moves it effectively left and right. Rotation is, again, pretty straightforward. Simply rotates that texture around the pivot point of the box itself, actually. And this is most, most useful for things like exactly 90 degrees, 180, etc. if you need to flip it around. So, very useful to have. You can, of course, have multiple faces selected and edit their scale, their offset, their rotation, all at once, if you need to. And you can force these to be in world space if you want, which just means that it's not based off the rotation or the scale of the box. You can also, if you get some pretty uh, crazy UVs going on like this, simply select all the faces you want to reset to defaults and click on Reset UVs to Default, just like it sounds. And it will do that for you. So good, uh, good button to use if you happen to, you know, just really mess up the UVs and need to get need to get them back to something basic. If I were to simply apply material, so for example, let's delete this cube and edit this base here and make this look a little more interesting, just real quick. Let's say I wanted to drop on this brick material. I can apply it just like that, and it's not going to screw up the light map simply by applying it. And I can go ahead and, you know, make this entire thing look a bit more interesting very quickly and simply. Again, using that very handy right-click feature. And I could be applying different materials as well. See, I had, uh, what else do we have in here? Sort of a wooden material, maybe. So pretty simple to do that. And that really concludes uh, the use of the texturing tool and the UV controls in ProBuilder. As you can see, they're very simple to use. You can do a lot with them and really build up your level awfully quickly. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.